Welcome to our file hubble drive time. In this video, I want to show and demonstrate setup and commissioning of an integrated drive out of our second generation of motion controllers, uh, this small one here. This is a 2232BX4 motor with integrated motion controller. The encoder here is linear halls, which are directly integrated. And uh, in the rear side, we got the user interface. The motor here is capable of generating um, roughly 16 millinewton meters of torque at uh, a speed of 6000 RPM at nominal voltage of 12 volt here. Important to know, the complete drive electronic is integrated in the back here. For the video here, I'm going to use the integrated demo unit here, so there's the motor. And it's important to notice the adapter here is only for convenience. So now it's easy to not only connect the motor, but to connect external IOs, the power supply and the communication interface. There are a few configuration switches here because for the D sub connector here, it's either the can open interface or the RS-232 interface. Both of them can be used with a, a D sub connector, but they use a different pinout and that's why we use the switches here. In this video, I'm going to use the RS-232 interface. So, as a next step, I have, of course, to add power and communication. So, let's use the power supply, 24 volt. And as soon as I connect the power supply, the motor is going to start up and running autonomously because uh, there is a um, script integrated into the uh, driver here. You can create your own script and have this one move autonomously. For the video here, I would of course have to add a D sub interface for the RS-232. And as my PC does no longer support the RS-232 interface, it's an USB to RS-232 connector here that I'm going to use. That's it for now. We are set and can switch to the motion manager. So here is the view from the motion manager. First step is to establish connection, and that's here in the quick start area on the left side, the single tool that we do have. And in that case, it's a COM interface, so RS-232. And with these USB to RS-232 adapters, it's always uh, kind of unclear which one it would be, but I tested this before uh, the video here, and it should be the COM15 here. And then, uh, as we do have RS-232 interfaces for either the speed controller series for our second or for our third generation of motion controllers, you get a few pictures of the drives that you would now be able to connect to. So here we are with the small integrated one. So that's fine. And then using the RS-232 interface, it could either be a configuration like here, where I'm connected to a single one of these ones, of these drives, or I could hook up to a small network of these drives sharing a single RS-232 connection. In that case, the board rate would have to be pre-configured for all of them to be at the same speed, and they would have to have different node numbers. So here I'm with a single drive, and in that case, the motion manager will identify the used communication speed. So scan is finished, the drive is found, and when I'm done here with the uh, established uh, connection wizard, uh, the device tree is populated, and the quick start area of the motion manager is populated with the tools related to the second generation of motion controllers, and down here you'll find uh, a picture of the drive. What I can also see here is that it's still in auto execution mode. So the power stage is enabled and a script is running on this uh, motion controller. And so for the next steps of configuration, I first stop the script and disable the power stage. So now I'm set and can step through these first steps. It's using the select motor wizard. Of course, with such an integrated unit, I can't and I shouldn't select a motor. So this motor, of course, can't be changed here. But that's an overview of what we have here. The only value here uh, that is changeable is the connected voltage. That's a measured value here. Um, 
This one is used to calculate the gains for the control loops. So it might be a good idea to do these steps when connected to a similar voltage as you plan to have it in your application. Next is selection of what type of transmission we do have. Could be a gearhead or something additional like a belt drive or even a screw. And we can enter uh, even a maximum speed that is going to be used in the application here. The dominating factor, however, is the loader inertia. In that case, uh, second generation of motion controllers, there is no auto identification. I have to give a guess of the inertia that is connected to my motor. My disk here is in a range of five gram centimeter square. So it's a perfect match for this motor here. And we do have uh, then such a uh, inertia factor of eventually it's two, then close to two. And then after having the transmission and the inertia, uh, the last one is here to select whether I want the control loops to be preset for either quiet running or high dynamics. And for a servo drive, it would usually be high dynamics. And uh, then I do get a summary of all the parameters that have been uh, calculated now. And only when I click on finish, these are actually downloaded to the drive. When I would use an external driver, this would be the uh, moment where the drive would actually be operated to teach in the different hall signal levels of these linear hall signals because uh, these differ from motor to motor slightly. And so a first step is to teach these into our driver and so match the motor and the driver. But for our integrated one, that's of course already done at the factory here at our end of line test station. So I'm finished here. Parameters are transferred and I could save them into the driver, but I don't need to because next step is going to be tuning and then I'm say, uh, changing the parameters anyways. So I'm done here and can step on to tuning. So these have been the first steps to set up and configure such an integrated motion controller out of our second generation of motion controllers. In the end, these are always the same steps. So setting up communication and then selecting the motor and uh, the uh, load that is connected to the motor. And it doesn't matter whether it's one of these small integrated, so the 22 millimeter CSD or even the COD for the CAN version and uh, the 32 millimeter integrated ones, 35 millimeter integrated ones, or an external one like an uh, MC3002 an MC3003 or the big one MC3006 and it doesn't matter whether it's one of the ones for the brushless motor so MCBL or for a DC motor MCDC or even for a linear motor MCLM. In the next video I'm going to show how to tune such a motor for your load. Meanwhile, if you've got any questions don't hesitate to contact our local sales team or our MC support team. And of course, check back with our channel here. Thanks for watching. You might as well leave a comment and bye.